New Warcraft movie reportedly in the works. Incoming Jailer cinematic, nerfs to gear from Mythic Plus, Guardian Druid changes, rogue nerfs, Paladin buffs, and PvPs looking stellar for Shadowlands. Well, all this and more in On Cooldown, the show that hasn't been here for three weeks now. We're sorry, okay? We missed you too. Do you want a new Warcraft movie? I mean, hell, who doesn't want that from this community? You know, a better one. A very successful one. And don't get me wrong, I love the Warcraft movie, but I am a bit biased and a huge fanboy. Similar to you probably. And with all the love I have for Duncan Jones, objectively, the motion picture had a lot of flaws, especially for people who weren't too familiar with the Warcraft franchise. It wasn't a success in NA and Europe, but it was huge in China, so the possibility for a new Warcraft movie isn't totally out the window, as website wegotitcovered.com has reliable sources that confirmed a new movie is currently in the works. Ha! They do mention that we're talking about the same sources that indicated Ben Affleck playing Batman in The Flash as a short cameo, which was confirmed a month later after the rumor. So, this should boost a bit of our faith in a new Warcraft movie. The sources say that the new movie will not continue the story initially planned and it will start from scratch all over again. And I said this during my 2016 review of the movie. Sure, the origins of Warcraft are great, but really, this franchise has some amazing characters and stories they could have gone for, and we all know how cool it would have been to portray Arthas in a full-fledged movie. Not only for fans, but for non-Warcraft folks too. Adding to this, the recent mock-up of Henry Cavill playing Arthas, which feels so right, looks so perfect. I mean, the man nailed Geralt in, in the Witcher series, and we also know that Henry played World of Warcraft, as admitted in his 2016 Conan interview. I was playing World of Warcraft at the time, and <laughs> I had my priorities straight. <laughs> Wait a minute, but you were playing oh. World of Warcraft, and the phone rings, and you're like, I'll get that later? It was an important part of a particular dungeon that I was going through, and... and <laughs> It's cool now that I'm Superman. I mean, hell, what better man can you get in a leading role for a new Warcraft movie? You do realize Warcraft The Beginning is the highest grossing video game movie to date with $439 million earned and sure, this was mostly thanks to China and with a production cost of roughly $150 million, it failed to generate high profits, but it profited in the end, nonetheless, even if that profit was tiny. Cueing this to the fact that Warcraft is a big franchise still among the biggest in gaming and a movie done right paired up with a World of Warcraft expansion done right could be very appetizing for Jalen Brack and Daddy Bobby Kotick. That being said, I would love to see the Arthur story in a Warcraft movie, but that's not important. What story would you like to see and what actors? Hit me up in the comments. Earlier this week, PC Gamer had its November cover leaked and lo and behold, it's a CGI version of The Jailer. A very CGI version of The Jailer. Okay, okay, I know CGI is not an adjective and as such cannot be very or any type of gradation possible, but The Jailer CGI is very CGI because goddamn look at that butte! It clearly indicates that there will be a rendered cinematic with the character since that had to be pulled from the WoW database or at least sent to them by Blizzard as an asset. Let's talk a little bit about the art style. It clearly looks a bit grim and dark and really reminds me of Diablo. The dark Diablo, not the rainbowy bullshit we have called Diablo 3. Nah, -uh. This could mean a couple of things. One, that the cinematic will be dark and by extension, the story and the overall vibe of the expansion dark, which is fucking a welcome change after so many years of Vulpera and Mechanomes and Fairy Mounts. Not that the game has to be exclusively dark, but life isn't all rainbows and sunshine and seeing a grimmer side every now and again is definitely refreshing. Besides that, looking at the model, you can notice the ears being a bit bat-like, a bit venthyr like a bit nothrazim like well you know our boys Akalon and pyromancer and other content creators already touched this subject and speculated on what this all could mean if the jailer is in any way connected to the nothrazim then as a proxy he could be connected to the burning legion 
be honest, the Burning Legion has always been a cool concept, a cool villain to have in the game. At least it's more tangible than the Void Lords and Legion as an expansion has been one of their best ever, ever done. And let's go down on that some more. If you read the cover title, it says in quotation marks, it's the most ambitious expansion we've ever made. It being Shadowlands, of course. You know, Blizzard isn't very liberal with their public statements and this confidence means a lot, especially if you have been playing Enhancement Shaman. What? That can also mean that we will be expecting an interview. Now, has their interview concluded? I would like to think so, hence the quote added on the cover, meaning that the expansion is just in its final tuning. Meaning, no reworks, no major changes on the horizon, what we have now, bar some number buffs and nerfs, will be what we will be playing. Is this all that we will be getting? Certain classes still need attention, while others are being played the same for over 3 years now. How confident is Blizzard in Shadowlands? Do they know something we don't? Very likely, but will it be enough? Almost a month away before we find out. And today's comment of the day comes from P. Ochoki, and he said... One day, I'll be on the comment of the day. Hopefully before Flame gets a significant other. Must be over 5 foot 8. Must have a 7 pack. No, no fuck. Must, uh... Mm. Be... I'm not here for sex. Oh. I just want French... Yeah, tell that to your duck face. The fuck. I like intellectual men, please be smart men, women want smart men. Yeah, regarding your comment man, I think you're good. Now here's a bit of a spicy nugget for you. You probably heard by now that the gear dropping from Mythic Plus Dungeons has been nerfed. Not only end dungeon drops will be limited to one item, since in Shadowlands the loot table is much more limited than in previous expansions, but the item level will be down 3 levels when compared to heroic gear. So at the end of a 15 key, your gear will be 210, while a gear drop from a heroic boss will be 213. Not a big difference, but still a difference. Of course, you will still be able to get your 226 item level piece from the weekly vault if you complete a plus 14 key, and our buddy Dratnos made some calculations showing that even with these recent changes, if you only play Mythic Plus, playing a minimum of 4 dungeons per week, you will still get gear 70% faster than before. You're probably thinking on what is the point or value of Mythic Plus and Shadowlands apart from 114 key per week, you know, in the preparation for the heroic raid. And you're right to say it's a bad move because less people will be incentivized to do dungeons as prior to this, you could spam mythic plus runs to quickly get heroic level gear and be ready for the raid and a lot of people actually enjoyed spamming mythic plus. Myself included. Sure, you will still do them before castle Natria, but as soon as you start getting gear from the raid, there will be really zero reasons to do multiple dungeons, as the item level will be higher in the raid. Well, that except the one dungeon you want to run for your weekly vault. This is 100% intentional by Blizzard, and my guess is they wanted to stop the M plus spamming and add a bit more value to heroic raiding. This could potentially be a good thing for heroic raiders, but a nightmare for mythic ones. As for two expansions, they got used to this cycle of spamming M plus and heroic runs until their mythic encounters. Hell, some of them were also doing this for MDI, but at the end of the day, if you absolutely love doing mythic plus, you will still do them because of the love you have for them. And given the track record by Bliss, this might very well be reverted. In PvP news, our boy Stoops did it! He started a big wave of awareness on problems regarding PvP gear. And now, we have some major improvements to how this will work in Shadowlands. First of all, as, I don't know, 95% of classes value versatility in PvP, they added versatility combinations on all PvP gear. And sure, while not all the combinations are available, 
This is, no doubt, something all PvPers desired and feedback and Blizzard listened. So now, the vendor will have two pieces of every gear type, all with versatility mainly and other stats combined with it. Not only that, but in order to counter the abuse of PvE trinkets in PvP, they added bonuses to the PvP trinkets in the form of a 20% buff to versatility in PvP environments. If you equip two PvP trinkets, you know, a gladiator's medallion and an unused badge. Only the damage and healing part of versatility though has been buffed, not the damage reduction. Which uh, is a throwback to the old PvP power we used to have in MOP, so sure, you might be tempted to uh, get the Drestigoth version of Shadowlands, but you will lose out on a huge versatility buff which could be much more valuable, especially with all this versatility PvP gear. PV trinkets will surely be nerfed in PvP anyway, so don't know about you, but I'm even more excited for Shadowlands PvP now. Can't wait! We've been asking for it for a while, a long while, and it's finally here. Guardian Druid changes, not very major, but could be pretty impactful. First of all, coming from the Feral World, Infected Wounds will now be a new passive. Mangle and Maul will cause the target to be slowed by 50%. This is essentially a kite mechanic. Now, it is applied by single target abilities, which is a bit of, of turnoff, but the slow is pretty strong. With Incarnation, Mangle hits 3 targets and as a result you would be slowing 3 people at once, supposedly dungeon people, minions, because bosses cannot be slowed. Unless you find uses for this on a raid ad, the functionality might not be that widespread. The coolest change is the new talent replacing Lunar Beam. Tooth and Claw gives your auto attacks a 20% chance to empower your next maul stacking two times and dealing 40% extra damage and reducing the damage the affected target will do to you by 15% for 6 seconds. Now this is busted on the beta because once you maul again and refresh the effect, the damage reduction stacks and with enough haste, you will have 100% uptime of over 100% damage reduction. Clearly not intended, but they did script a stacking mechanic to the buff which leads us to believe it's because they want the effect to stack just not to the point where you are immortal, clearly. Taking literally zero damage, I mean, that could be fun. So the best guess is that the 15% damage reduction was meant to stack twice for a total of 30% damage reduction with a refreshable mechanic. This and with the new legendary Ursox Fury remembered, rest in peace Ursox, we saw the cinematic. You now have an absorb on Thrash which addresses the biggest concern about Bear. I would personally like to thank the devs for looking at Bear. Guys, Ian, we haven't had Bear love since the end of Legion. It played the same for an entire expansion and finally we have some stuff to put us on the map, so thank you. Sub Rogue has been nerfed, to be precise, the Akari Soul Fragment Legendary, which is great. I mean, listen, the damage was stupid busted and as long as the nerfs are to the borrowed power and not the base spec, I am happy. Nerfs to the base spec are horrible and make it unplayable, remember Uldir? But you can always get a different legendary. Now Red Paladin, mm, mm, mm. Well Pro Paladin has had some of its OP legendaries nerfed, as with other specs, but Red got the most amount of buffs, yes, buffs! You know, if you have been watching Marcellian Online, you know that we are Pally lovers. Expurgation was nerfed as an already underperforming and really boring conduit. With this in mind, the community has been asking for an AoE buff and mechanic added to red since all the conduits are single target and all but one legendary, which has an incredibly low proc rate, are single target focused as well. Replace Expurgation, redesign it so its nerfed damage applies in AoE instead. Aside from that, Virtuous Command has been buffed to last 6 seconds and its base percentage is doubled. Doubled I say! This synergizes amazingly with Execution Sentence that increases your damage by 20% and Final Reckoning by another 50% to your Holy Power Spenders. This gives the signature red burst that we know and love. Almost the same buffs to Templar's Vindication. Like how off were they with red tuning? 
but that just brings hope to red players. Truthswake's dot has also been buffed to 15% additional damage, up from the 10%. Reds have been in a meh state for years, and because they weren't completely dog shit, the devs did not see a reason to address them properly. The current changes are reassuring. It's been three whole weeks and we haven't posted an on cooldown. We don't have any excuse apart from being super busy and Flame being on vacation and me being on vacation. And this is a two man job. We cannot yeah. make like we'll solo on cooldown because you know, it's the- It's just gonna, gonna be point. on or, yeah, or cool down. Or cool or down. You don't want that. Are, are you down with cool when it's on? <laughs> but hey, we're back, all right? We had a bunch of stuff to go through. It's been a hell of a week. Not we that. finished the giveaway. It's all good over there. I know a lot of you people are worried that you didn't get flagged or something went wrong. It's just a delay on Blizzard's part. We have confirmation. Everything is fine. Yep, yep, You're gonna yep. get it. There's just a lot of things that's happening over there. So relax. In all other news, we got what? We got the Mythic Plus Man. gear nerfs, we got the Paladin buffs to Conduits, we got Dude. Rogue nerfs! Guardian... Guardian Dread. Dude, I was so excited with Guardian Dread because literally they haven't had a change since literally. I think the end of Legion. So like three to I four know, years. I know, you were complaining all the time where you're playing Guardian, you were complaining all the time. You did say that was the easiest tank spec? Yeah, they didn't it's, have like much to do, that's the thing. But now, I mean, it's not that they have, they have Maul as an extra button, which is not exciting, but there's like a couple of mechanics there that you can play with. But what's really cool, man, is Miss Weaver bot. Have you uh, seen that shit? I haven't seen that shit. That was we actually, no. I think it was last week. No, I love Miss Weaver. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, they got, they got an interesting rechange to the crane, to the, the cooldown, the celestial crane thing. I know, I know about the crane, but I know what about... But what about the Whatever, dude. man. It's it's things that we couldn't possibly get into a whole yeah. episode without making yeah. it an hour long. But we do believe that there was some important stuff going on this week, like the CGI jailer man. or the rumors on the new Warcraft movie. Dude. And I mean this, you know, probably before or let's say let's say like this pre-patch is gonna drop when? I think in two weeks max from now. Yeah, max two weeks, so... And when do you think a CGI Jailer cinematic will drop? Pre-patch well, or after? I would, I would, no, I think it was... I would have guessed it would be... After. Yeah, it's because access. Because PC Gamer Magazine, that's the issue for November. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it would be weird for them to drop it like... Maybe, maybe the it's the raid, the end of the raid cinematic. But that's CGI. Like it couldn't be the end. That, that's always, in, you know, unless, pre-rendered in-game. Unless it's a, unless it's a 9.1 patch? Man, what the fuck? You ain't putting me no goddamn CGI jailer oh, for 9.1 back in <laughs> what? No. When are you gonna no. put the CGI though? No, they're gonna put it like uh, before. I, I believe this speculation, but I believe that will drop somewhere on the launch, the actual launch of the expansion. Mm. So I get the pre-patch on the 27th of October. Somewhere around that time, we will get it because that is the November issue of PC Gamer. So it's at the end of October. It kind of makes sense. I don't even know goddamn 9.1. I'm waiting for know. that shit in 2021. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. And of course, now that we reach here, we can also thank our patrons for supporting our channel. Yes. Ah, it's, it been, uh, it's been uh, an uh, emotional trip, uh, especially since we released the music video. We got a lot of good feedback on that. A lot of you people joined in, a lot of people helping us with the content. And guys, we're getting close to the launch. And this means you'll be supporting all the guys that will be coming. It's gonna be a lot of guys. We're already in talks with a bunch of people from the Discord, you know, big authorities in the oh, class yeah. and specs. So you're gonna get some juicy good stuff on what you will be able, not what will be play, how to play the specs you want to make. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, think, I, think, I think that's kind of how it is, all right. And don't forget to catch our streams because we do stream five times Better per week yeah, with uh, different time schedules so we can catch everybody down under and in the US as well because yeah. I know it's hard to get everybody at an ideal time. I, we know and we're trying to, to come with a better solution for that, but until then... Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, have, we'll, we'll adapt and hopefully you adapt with us. It's uh, the most we can do. It's five streams per week, so anyway, the, tomorrow is going to be the big stream, you know, where there's a lot of stuff happening. Yeah. With that, I think we can close it off. Thank you yeah. once again for being patient with us on Cooldown Back on Track. Have a great weekend, guys. Bye-bye. I've been loving it then, I still love it now. Still, I play wild. Still, I play wild. Getting better every day, let me show you how. Cause still, I play wild. Still, I play wild. It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day, it's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play. Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow. Still, I play wild.